Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. I wanted to do a video on digital calipers. Uh, this is something that if you don't own already, um, you're probably looking at if you're watching this video. Um, and if you don't own a pair and you're into any one of the hobbies that benefit from having some fairly precise measurements like 3D printing as an example, it's really something you should look at. And if it is something you're shopping for, you're probably wondering how much do I really need to spend to get a quality measuring tool. So I've got a couple different examples here, um, as well as micrometer that was my grandfather's um, to do just sort of some establishing a baseline and also a comparison. And if you've never seen one of these and don't know how they work, um, I'll show you how that works as well. So let's kind of establish a baseline first. This is a stare at uh, it's like a number 216. They still make a model number 216. I don't know that they make this exact model anymore. Uh, this is what's called a digital micrometer and it is carbide faced so there's two thin pieces of carbide on both this part that moves and also the stationary pad here. And it's digital because we can read out the thousands right here on this um, I guess you could call it a well, not a display since it's not electronic but it is digital because it's reading out in digits as opposed to having to read based on graduated lines going out of the cylinder and then also lines in this direction that you would count up to get to the number of thousandths that you're measuring. So I've also got a couple things here alongside this micrometer. This is a stare at one inch standard. So this is a piece of metal that is polished in exactly one inch, um, one inch wide. And I also have just a three eighth inch ball bearing as well. So let's go ahead and measure these with the micrometer first, just to kind of establish a baseline. Hopefully this is going to show up on the camera. So I'm making sure that the widest part of that ball bearing is between there, and I'm just turning this until I start to feel tension. You can see that readout is exactly 0.375 375 thousandths or 3 eighths of an inch. And I'll do the same thing with this one inch standard. This is one of the downsides of using a micrometer for measurements that you don't need this level of precision for. Uh, they kind of take forever to turn, especially if you're making a bunch of measurements that you just need to make quickly. And also, uh, micrometers, so this is a zero to one inch. This will measure anything precisely between uh, zero and one inch. If I needed to measure more than an inch, I'm going to need to go to a one to two inch micrometer and so on and so forth. They generally only measure the range of one inch. So I'm going to go just past an inch and I'm going to bring my standard in. And you can see exactly one inch. So what that tells me is that this tool is essentially in spec. This micrometer is in spec. As, as, as good as I can do here on the bench. I mean, there's some temperature variability. If I was a standards institute, I'm sure I would not just use a single one inch standard and a three eighth inch ball bearing, but you get the idea. Um, by the way, when you use a micrometer, you generally want to return it to close to its zero position, but not all the way to zero. You don't want those faces touching, whether they're carbide or steel. They shouldn't actually be touching, um, but you also don't want to leave this out further than it needs to be as you run the risk of something getting bent and it's not going to fit back in its case or box. So I'll turn this back down to, oh, let's say about 75 thousandths. And the first one I'm going to show you here um, from a digital caliper perspective, this is the first one I bought. Um, I bought this about eight years ago. I want to say I paid about $20 for it shipped. It was very inexpensive, and these are still available today. And I will link, um, I'll link to all of these items um, uh, at the in the description of the video. So check down below if you want to check these out. Um, and uh, they are going to be Amazon affiliate links. So if you buy something based on those links, I'm going to get a couple bucks. I use that to buy more toys I don't need that I usually do YouTube re video reviews on. So that's that. So again, I, I've had this one for about eight years. This is an example of kind of the cheapest of the, the cheap. I'll link to a, a current example of this, but they're pretty much all the same. You'll see the uh, this part here might be a different color. Maybe even the plastic is a different color or the printing's different, but the castings are the same. 
Um, the electronics are the same. This is your, your standard run-of-the-mill um, cheap digital caliper. You see I'm going to switch this on. I do have it all the way closed. It is reading zero and it's fairly repeatable. I zeroed this out I think yesterday. It's a little bit difficult to get the same pressure when you're closing just because the movement on the slide is not consistent so it's difficult to get sort of that finger feel of closing it consistently on something. And I should also mention that I've customized this one. Um, one of the problems with these cheap digital calipers is the faces move back and forth and this one's pretty tight because I disassembled and actually bent the uh, the metal part that retains it down a little bit to squeeze it tighter and when I did that I realized why um, these cheap ones are all so loose. It's because the uh, the grinding on these is not consistent and also mine actually had a little bit of a bend in it as well and I'm, I've never dropped this I'm pretty sure the bend was in it from day one so they leave them intentionally loose just so that they don't bind up and when I tightened mine up it was smooth through part of the range but then through two other parts of the range out here it was so tight I could barely move it so and you can see I really kind of butchered the back of this but what I did is I marked it um, just with a sharpie and then slid it so I could see the high points essentially on the grind and I just ground those um, down with a very fine um, uh, a very fine belt on my one inch um, belt grinder and of course it looks terrible now but it actually moves much smoother and because it doesn't have that rocking back and forth motion this is more accurate after my mods than it was when I bought it so something to be aware of uh, these cheap ones the 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 jaws here will rock back and forth and change your measurement by 10, 15 thou. Um, but this one, this one's pretty good. So again, returning to zero, it's not bad. Sometimes you get a little bit of a false reading, but pretty good. Again, for a twenty-dollar caliper. Let's grab that three-eighth inch ball bearing. Come on. And I'm going to take two measurements with each one of these digital calipers. You essentially have, well, you've got a couple different measuring faces here. Um, but the two ones that you're going to use most often are the larger flat part of the jaw here. And then this section that's ground to a much thinner part and it comes to a point. So if I measure here, I get it's about one and a half thou out. And if I measure down here, Yeah, it's a little closer. It's out by about one thou, which is not bad. I mean, again, for a twenty-dollar caliper, this is not bad. Fit and finish on these is honestly, I want to say it's pretty poor. It's not a really great quality tool. It's not something you're going to be, you know, proud of and kiss goodnight before you go to sleep. <laughs> but um, if for twenty dollars or on around about that price point, it's honestly, it's not bad. Um, a couple issues you're going to run into with this quality of digital caliper is um, sometimes if I move it too quickly, in that case I'm about out one thou. Um, I've, it's difficult to replicate. It's not frequently that it does it, but sometimes I'll be using this and I'll open it and I'll close down to a measurement and it'll seem to be out quite a bit and then I'll close it to zero and it will indeed be out quite a bit. And when I say quite a bit, I mean by like half or three quarter of an inch. Somehow it seems to be like losing sync with the, uh, the the capacitance method that it uses for measurement. I think it uses a capacitance method anyway. I'm not going to be getting into that in this review. Um, but for the most part, it works okay. And if I do need to use this one, um, and it seems like the measurement is off, I'll just close it, zero it back out, and take the measurement again. This is the one I tend to use in my shop if my hands are dirty, greasy, whatever. I'm not that worried about potentially ruining the tool if I drop it. I mean, again, they're 20 bucks, so I could just buy another one. Oh, you know what? Let's take a look at that one inch standard with this as well. Let's close it. Yeah, see, now we're, now we're like consistently half a thou out, which, I mean, it's not that much, but they're supposed to be accurate to one thou. Again, we'll take a measurement here. 
out by about one and a half thou. And strangely enough, it's, well, I guess actually at the jaws, it's really close. It's not out by more than one thou, somewhere between half a thou and one thou. All right, let's set these aside. One other annoying feature of these, and I say feature, um, and I don't know that that's really the right word, uh, even though I'm turning them off and you can see the display is going off when I hit that button, these things never turn off. And they draw a ton of power when they're when they're off. And when I say a ton of power, I mean, you know, it's relative, right? It's There's a tiny watch cell battery in here, so it's actually still drawing a very small amount of current when it's off, but it draws enough that if I don't use these things for four or five months, every damn time, um, never fails, the battery is, is flat, and I've got to replace the battery. And these things are cheap. I mean, you know, you get like 50 of these things on Amazon for 10 bucks ship, so it's not that they're that prohibitively expensive, but it's just it's annoying and it's clearly a poor design. So let's set that one aside. Uh, next one I'm going to show you is this is the uh, this is the big one. This is the Mitotoyo. This is the one that you read about on forums or you know any any time there's a review for anything other than a Mitotoyo, they say you know just call it a day and get the Mitotoyo. And I'm not necessarily saying that that's wrong. This is an excellent tool. This, I think I got on sale for about 110 shipped. I think they tend to run more about around 130 or 135 shipped. I'll link this one in as well. Uh, this is made in Japan, and it is a superb tool. Everything about this tool is excellent. The fit and finish is like nothing else. Uh, I don't think in Japan they understand the concept of that'll do. Everything is, it's just, it's really, really nice. I know it sounds like I'm, I'm geeking out about this thing hardcore, but it is a it is a superb tool. Um, all the grinds are perfect. All of the faces look dead on, as if it's a piece of jewelry. Um, even the plate on the back looks like it is it's engraved in there. Looks like maybe it's even done with a with a laser and like a, a kind of a hard resin material um, that has an adhesive on the back. Um, the buttons have a nice tactile feel to them, and most important, oh, and <laughs> the the action on this is just, it's completely smooth. Sliding this, whether I'm doing it slow or fast, I sense no difference in the tension as I slide it along there, and that's really important because I should be able to apply the same amount of pressure when I'm taking a measurement, whether I'm taking a measurement of something this wide or taking a measurement of something this wide. If, there's re if the resistance changes on here when I roll this wheel to close the jaw, um, I'm going to end up with a slightly different measurement. So that consistency is important. Now let's do some measurements. Oh, and before we do that, I'll close this thing a couple times. You can see we're always dead on. In fact, even if I force it, it still zeroes perfectly. We can do this all day. It's always going to be dead on. Let's take the 3 8 inch ball bearing. 0.375, dead on. Pretty much dead on every time. I saw half a thou off every once in a while. Let's try down here. It's a little trickier because with such a thin surface, you've got to find the spot where it just slips through. There we go. So on the sharpened parts, it looks like it's about out by half a thou, or the ball bearing itself is out by half a thou. Um, I mean, even on the micrometer, it wasn't dead on 375. The 5 was a little high on the, the, uh, the, the digit was a little high of the rest of the numbers, so it actually is telling me that this is probably just slightly, slightly under um, 3 8. Let's try the 1 inch standard. Now, I'm taking a look at this carefully because, unfortunately, this picked up a little bit of corrosion in a couple spots in my old shop where it was damp, so I want to make sure I'm getting parts of the face that are nice and polished. Yeah, so if I get on the nice polished parts of the face, you can see consistently within It's not as consistent as I'm expecting, so I'm 
suspecting that I might be on some corrosion here. Yeah, there we go. Pretty consistently seeing dead on one inch. Let's try it the sharpen part of the jaws. Yeah, that's even more consistent. We're seeing one inch. Oh, half a thou out, half a thou out. Yeah, I'm seeing at most half, half a thou in variance and I might be moving this thing a little bit or there might be surface corrosion on there that I'm just not even seeing with the naked eye. But point is, uh, high consistency, very accurate. And if we return to zero, See how consistent that is. Excellent tool, excellent tool. I mean, it's like, I guess the one downside is the fit and finish on this is so nice. It's like a piece of jewelry. I'm afraid to grab this one if my hands are greasy or dirty or, or to measure something that might be greasy because it's such a superb fit and finish tool. Nice case as well. Only thing I don't like about this is, and this is true of all of these, but it has a live hinge. It's just a thin piece of plastic. Eventually that thing's going to break and then I'm not going to have a case for what this tool costs and the fit and finish and quality of the rest. I don't know why they couldn't have done something different rather than just a, a live plastic hinge to ensure that this thing is still going to be, have, still going to have a nice solid case, you know, 15 years from now. Also, uh, battery in this thing, I've owned this one for about a year and a half and this is the original battery. And this is my go-to. I use this one the most, especially if it's related to 3D printing and I don't have dirty hands and I'm either um, measuring parts or just using it to estimate the sizes while I'm, I'm designing. So I don't know what the battery life on this tool is, but I can tell you at a bare minimum, it is a year and a half. And from other reports, it seems to be somewhere between three and five years, which is, that's excellent. If I'm putting the new battery in every three to five years, whatever, that's good. Last one. This is one I just got. I've looked at these a couple times and there's another review on YouTube, a guy that did, that reviewed a whole bunch of these. Um, he reviewed a, a bunch of the cheap ones that are, again, they're pretty much all the same as this one. I think there's, there's like maybe one or two factories in China that are just kicking out these castings and the same electronics and people are either buying them from that manufacturer with their own branding on them or they're buying them as just a bare tool and you know they're separately having uh, the graphics produced and you know they're manufacturing their own case but they're all the same really crappy twenty dollar calipers this one i kind of assumed it was the first time i saw these crop up on amazon um, this is the eye gauging origin cow um, i was wrong this is a nice tool it is not the mita toyo um, some of the reviews out there will say it is just as nice as the mita toyo it's not but it is close uh, if I had to say, if I said, okay, if I said, what's this closer to? Is this closer to the Mita Toyo or is it closer to the piece of crap calipers? It's over here, okay? Um, it's definitely not the same as this $20 Chinese crap. Um, it's also not the Mita Toyo. It doesn't have that sort of made in Japan fit and finish perfection. Um, but that said, it is it is a nice tool. Um, first thing I noticed was the action on this was very smooth. It was fresh out of the box. It wasn't quite as nice as the Mita Toyo. Uh, me having used it quite extensively the last couple of days, it has smoothed up a bit. It's still not quite as nice as the Mita Toyo, but it is nice. Um, there's no play in the jaws back and forth. The grinds are they're nice they're not as nice as the Mita Toyo you can tell just looking at it right away um, that they're the, the edges the edges aren't broken the grind is a little bit in, inconsistent there same thing with the rear there's places where the grind just is not consistent it looks like maybe this has a little bit of a belly in it and when I say a little bit I mean we're talking like half a thou um, you know it's not something that I would say makes me not want to own the tool, but it doesn't have that same fit and finish, um, you know, sort of perfection of the Mita Toyo. But how's it measure, right? That's what matters here. That's what we're doing. So let's see how zero return. And I'm seeing, I think one time we saw half a thou in there. 
The wheel on this one is also, it doesn't mate as nice. You hear it kind of flopping around. It doesn't have that nice finger feel when you close it. It's hard to get, it works. It's hard to be consistent when you close it. Let's grab the Mita Toyo out again. This one, the fit on this wheel, it's very easy to be consistent with it. See that it's not flopping around. You don't hear any play in it. It's very easy to consistently apply the same pressure when you close that guy. This one, it's nicer than the $20 one, but it's got some play in it. It's hard to be consistent with it. But you see, nine times out of 10, it's returning to zero perfectly. Let's see how it does on the standards. It's the 3 8 inch ball bearing, dead on. At the jaws, dead on. I mean, technically, that's actually, I would say, it's measuring this more accurately than the Mitotoyo. Now, that said, the jaws on these have only seen use on these couple of test objects and some plastic parts. They've not seen real-world use like those Mitotoyos have for, um, have for a year and a half on all sorts of things, including, like, um, you know, abrasive stuff. So jaws on those might be slightly compromised in comparison to the jaws on these that I've only seen a couple things on my bench here over the last couple of days. Let's check the repeatability. Right on 3 8 Pretty much right on. Excellent. Let's try the one inch standard. Right on at the jaws. Seeing a little bit of variability here like we did in the Mitotoyo. I actually I don't think that's the calipers and I don't think it was the Mitotoyo either. I think that's I think there is a little bit of surface corrosion on parts here that I'm just not I'm not seeing. I need to see about how I can polish this up without damaging it. If I find a spot that I, I can I can see looks the cleanest, yeah, there we go. I mean, if I if I specifically pick an exact spot that looks the cleanest, we're consistently at no more than out one thou or about half a thou. So why did I buy these? The Mita Toyos are great. Um, I was attracted to these because of this feature. So we're reading in um, thousandths of an inch right now, and which is, you know, the, the $20 ones will do that, the Mita Toyos will do that. Um, the Mita Toyos will also do, as well as the cheap ones, will also do uh, millimeters. So if I switch this, and it doesn't matter if I switch it at zero, if I switch it while we're all the way open, it'll switch into millimeters. You can see if we grab our 3 8 inch bearing, 9.52 millimeters. Um, but that's all I get. I get millimeters where I get thousandths of an inch. These have a really cool feature. Um, and not all the eye gaugings do this, so you need to take a look. The ones I'll link to underneath this video are going to offer this feature, but not all of the uh, the eye gauging origin cows do this. This this model in particular. I can switch between thousandths of an inch and millimeters. That's my millimeters. I think we're what, 9.52 on the Mita Toyo? 9.52 but I have another setting in here. If I go past inch, I get fractions. Which, hey, I mean, I know the math isn't that hard to do, but if you're measuring something that's imperial, um, like for example, this ball bearing, look at that. It's reading out 3 8. So I don't have any math to do. I know, hey, I'm right at 3 8. Now, I know, 0.375, 3 8, that's not that hard, um, but if you are measuring drill bits or you're measuring something else that is typically in is typically fractional, uh, that's really, really nice to have, to not have to grab the calculator if it's a more complex fraction, to be able to have that option to do that. You can see I come in on that, 3 8, 3 8, bang, 3 8, 3 8. You do that all day. That's a nice feature. Um, I wish I would have actually, I wasn't cheaping out here. Um, these, by the way, are, I believe I paid 50 
for these. Um, I would have bought another set of Mita Toyos. Even at $130, I would have bought another Mita Toyo if Mita Toyo offered one that did fractions. Um, they don't. I don't know if they, you know, just sort of the Japanese way of thinking, hey, use your damn calculator. You know, this is a measuring device. If you want to do math, use your calculator. Or, you know, what? But from what I could tell from their product literature, I visited their webpage, I looked through all the different models they offer, not just the ones that are commonly available on Amazon. I could not find a model that did fractional measurements. And I like that. This is the one that I keep in my shop that I use for things like measuring my drill bits if I've had a bunch out on the table and I'm putting them back into the, the, uh, the case uh, to quickly identify them. Because drill bits are something, and fractional drill bits are the most common drill bits in the, in the States. Uh, this one also takes a slightly larger battery than either the Mita Toyo um, or this guy. I've only had this for about a, a couple of days, so I, I couldn't tell you what the battery life is like on this. But from what I understand, uh, it does not suffer from the same problem as the $20 variants. Um, it's supposed to be good for a couple of years and or have similar battery life uh, to the Mita Toyo. Uh, this one also uh, came with a, uh, a depth measurement um, sort of uh, tool. Now this is not necessary, you don't need this to measure depth, but it makes it a lot easier um, in a situation where you might have a larger opening and you need to measure the, the center depth. So any caliper, um, the sliding part here is ground even with the back of the caliper. So you can take that caliper, I'll turn this one back on, if I wanted to measure, say, the depth of this hole, I need to have it against a, this, this, this silicone top is not the best suited for this, but I can take that slide, I can drop it on there and push it down and then pick it up. And that's, well, this is a case where fractions are not too useful. There we go, 6.08 millimeters. Uh, this piece here, I can set this, and I, I don't have a really flat surface here, but I can take this piece and if I set this on a flat surface and I bring this down and I lock it in when I know that's flat, it gives me a much nicer base uh, to work with. Uh, fortunately, the, the width of all these is, is, uh, is pretty standard between the Mitatoyo, um, the eye gauging, as well as the $20 cheapie. So I can actually use this little accessory on any one of these. And I may just permanently, or not permanently, but just I may just leave this attached to the, uh, the cheapie and just use that one as my sort of depth gauge. So thanks for staying tuned in the whole time. Um, I hope you found this interesting. I didn't find a whole lot of videos out there that sort of talked about, hey, what price point do I want to be at? Um, hopefully this gives you an idea of what kind of quality you're going to get for your money. This guy was 50-ish. I think you can get the one that doesn't do fractions for more like 40-ish. Um, the one I'm going to link to is the one that does fractions specifically. Uh, I, I, think it's, I think it's worth it, and I do think that this tool is worth $50. In fact, if I had to say, is each one of these worth what they cost? Yes, this guy is worth 20 bucks. If you have no caliper today and you only have $20 to spend, you're not wasting your money. This is a lot better than trying to measure by eyeing things up on a ruler, which is what I was doing before I bought this. Um, is this tool worth 130 bucks? Yes, all day long. If you have $130 to spend and you like having nice tools and you know, you're getting what you're paying for here. In fact, I would say I'd probably still buy this at $150. It is an excellent tool. Everything about it is just, it's just perfect. I'd change nothing. The eye gauging, is it worth $50? Yes, all day long. This is worth $50. I'd say it's probably worth potentially as high as $70. The problem is you get into the $70 price range and then you really question, do I just want to get the damn Mita Toyo? Um, there's a couple of issues with this. The accuracy is very good. The fit and finish is very good for a Chinese tool. The one issue I have with it is it's hard to be consistent with this roller. I don't know what's going on there. It's like it's like they made that plastic piece that retains it just too big. It shouldn't have that much movement in there. It makes it difficult to be consistent with it. The Mita Toyo, there's not that, I guess, you know what? The amount of play there is not widely different. It's like it's like this one just fits better. You know what it is? I guess this guy here does not drop below the rail. So it's always lined up, even when it's down. This guy here 
it's almost as if they, they kind of made a little flaw in the design there. The, the, uh, the wheel itself drops below the rail, so when you go to actuate it, sometimes it gets stuck on the rail. See, just there, see, it's getting stuck. So it's difficult to be consistent with it when you kind of pull this out to a rough measurement and then you go in for the, 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 uh, the thumb wheel push. They could have done a better job of that. It's a shame. I don't know whether the issue is, I think it needs to be the plastic piece that this sits in should probably be just a little bit wider and this should sit up a little bit higher. It's almost tempting to, uh, to try and design a replacement for that and 3D print it and see if I can smooth that up. It's just got just a bit too much play in it, but I'm, I'm nitpicking. This is an excellent tool. If you don't have $130 to spend on the Mita Toyo, um, but you can't afford $50, go with this one. This one, while it looks similar to those $20 ones, um, it genuinely is a much nicer tool than all those other guys. Don't get tricked by the ones that are just a couple bucks more than the really cheapy ones at like 20. They're the same thing, they just put a nicer sticker on it. That's not the case with the Origin Cal. This is truly a nicer caliper than these, you know, than all these cheapies. Again, thanks for watching. I'll link all these below. Um, if you haven't subscribed, I do videos like this where I review tools. Um, I cover some 3D printing stuff, just other projects I've got going on. Um, look forward to seeing you again.